Hey, I'm back with another chess video. I'm still Igor Smirnov, international grandmaster and chess coach. In this lesson, which is called Win Easily, I'm going to show you the easiest way for a win. And I'm not talking about a certain specific opening here. Quite the contrary. I'm going to give you the general path for gaining victories against most club players. First, I'd like you to think about this. Who is your typical opponent? Let's try to describe the most typical modern club player. What is his style and what can he really do during a practical game? First, he can attack. Yeah, that's what they really like to do. Everybody understands that the final goal of a chess game is to mate an opponent's king. Therefore, you need to attack him and reach this goal. Although there is a strict logic here indeed, this is still a bit primitive way of thinking. Nevertheless, this is the first characteristic feature of a typical club player. Secondly, he can use tactical tricks. Nowadays, every chess player can easily find lots of tactical puzzles – in chess books, websites and so on. That's why many players have a good tactical vision. And those who have an attacking style of play can usually implement tactics in their games. This is when they can be really dangerous for you. These two items are the only weapons which an ordinary club player can use in his games. Of course, it means that he has huge gaps in all other areas of a chess game. In fact, we may say that he don't understand chess game at all, because chess is a strategical game inherently. As I say, they don't play in chess, they play in another game called offense-defense. What I mean here is this. Let's imagine how such a player calculates variations. It goes like this. Now I will play this move and will attack here. He will have to defend. Then I will make that move and will attack there. He will defend. So you see, the only thing he can think about is offense and defense. That's why I call that they play in the game called offense-defense. Well, of course, this is a bit simplification, but generally, this is quite correct. Ok, the next question is this. How to overcome a typical club player? This is really simple. As we know, he has only two weapons. Take them away and he has no chances anymore. I'd like you to remember the next idea ever well. When there are no attacking moves, they do not know what to do. Thus, your goal is pretty simple. Create a strategical position when there are no direct attacking moves for your opponent. In such a situation, he will not know what to do, and when your opponent has no constructive ideas, you will definitely realize your plan sooner or later. This is how you can win lots of games easily, without even doing something special. Maybe you think, come on Igor, my opponents are not so weak, they are much stronger. No, they don't. Most of modern players don't have a real understanding of a chess game. So this portrait, which we discussed a bit earlier, is quite typical for lots of intermediate players and even for some of the title players as well. Now I will show you some examples and I'd like to make a special note. These are the games between well-known grandmasters. Thus, if this idea is correct for them, then it's definitely correct for your current opponents as well. Ok, here is the first example. d4, knight f6, c4, we can see king's indian defense. First moves are standard. Ok, let's start here. In this position black has a few possible plans. He can play e5, like he did in the game, he can play c5, which is also very popular nowadays, or sometimes black even may try to push b5, after some preparation of course, he can play like a6, c6 and then b5. Therefore, black has a few plans. And that's why it makes sense for black to make castling first. Because black needs to make castling anyway. And after that, depending on the white's next moves, black can decide which plan is more suitable for the 
current situation. You know, this is not even chess understanding, this is a simple logic. Therefore, the e5 move is not so good for black. K white played knight e2, c6, bishop g5, and here black played queen a5. What do you think about this move? Well, of course, this is a strategical mistake. But anyway, let's try to understand the black's logic. First of all, maybe he was worried about this pin over the black's knight. In fact, this is certainly not a big problem, and it's definitely not what should black care about right now. The next thing, the move queen a5 creates a tactical threat. Now, if white is not careful enough, black can play e takes d4, and this will be a discovered attack on the white's bishop g5. So black found tactics. And as I told you earlier, if they can attack, they will attack, because this is the only thing which they can do. Strategically, the move queen a5 is a huge mistake, however. Because first of all, in an opening we need to develop our pieces and not to move a queen. At the early stage of a game, I mean. Secondly, in King's Indian defense, white usually attacks on the queen side. Therefore, we may predict that in the future white will push the pawns there and the black's queen will give white extra tempos for an attack. So, certainly the queen is misplaced there. Ok, white played queen d2, knight d7, d5. By the way, here black already experiences some problems because of the wrong position of his queen. Now white is threatening to take on the c6 and to win the d6 pawn then. And since black don't have a queen on the d8, he don't have a convenient way to protect this pawn. That's why black has to take there and to release the tension. Here black plays h6. Ok, I will not criticize this move too much, it makes some sense, but nevertheless I don't like it too much, because after bishop e3 this pawn is under attack and black can't make castling right now, so he will need to spend additional time for preparing development. And the white's bishop on the e3, by the way, is standing pretty well. Here, except attacking the h6 pawn, it also controls this diagonal, which is very good for white. Ok, here black played a6. Probably black is preparing b5, trying to attack here. Again, as I've already repeated many times, attack is the only thing which they can do, so they will always try to attack. Now, let's talk about some strategical things. As we already know, in the King's Indian defense, it's usually white who is attack on the queen side. That's why if black tries to push pawns there, it will rather help white, because it will create weaknesses in the black's position. And it will also, it will simplify the white's task for opening lines there. And last of all, a6 is just a waste of time while black still has an undeveloped position. Therefore, we may say that a6 is a huge misunderstanding of a chess game. And by the way, again, I like you to know that the black player is a grandmaster. Ok, white played knight g3, then h5, bishop d3, knight h7. Ok, this is a knight back, which places the knight on the edge, and it's quite difficult to explain this move and what is the reason. Perhaps black was trying to prepare and play the move f5 here. But of course it's quite ridiculous, because first of all, anyway black needs to make castling first. Secondly, since black's position is undeveloped, the move like f5 is quite a suicidal idea. After opening of the position, the black's position will fall apart. And additionally, the black's king side is already weakening by his advancing of the h-pawn. Therefore, this idea is definitely wrong. Ok, white simply castled, black also made castling. Now already we can see that white can use a standard plan, attack on the queen side, white can play something like rook b1, then push b4, and he will get a very good initiative position and the black's queen will give white an extra tempos for an attack. In the game white found another, and even more interesting, idea to realize the similar plan. He played a4. Now the white's plan is that after any next black's move, he played knight c5 in the game. 
White can play b4 and after queen takes b4, a5. Now the queen is in the cage and white is going to play rook b1 and to simply win this queen. And black has no sufficient defense. Now let's say if he goes knight b3, white will simply play queen, d queen b2. It creates a pin. On the next move white will go rook a4 or rook a3 and will win again. Therefore, during one of the next moves black resigned. And here is the next example. d4, knight of 6, c4, we can see the Nimzo defense, queen c2. Okay, maybe it's a bit early to start commenting, but anyway, I'd like to make one note here. We need to understand that the white's idea of playing queen c2, and then a3, which gives white two bishops advantage, breaks the base principles of a chess game, because in an opening we need to develop pieces. Well, I'm not saying that queen c2 is a mistake. It's possible to play it, yeah, it's quite okay. But anyway, if you play such a move, you must understand that you make move which breaks the base principles of a chess game, and that's why you need to be careful after that. Black played castling, a3, bishop takes, d6, a3. What do you think about this move, by the way? Now we can see that white did all the pawn moves and some moves of the queen, which generally should be incorrect, because in the opening we need to develop pieces again. I guess that white player did these moves without even any thinking, because these are the book moves. And this is actually the point of this lesson. Lots of players play chess without even understanding what they do, and without any real understanding of a chess. Black played c5. By the way, c5 is an attempt of strategical refutation of the white's previous mistake. Normally, in such a situation, white should play knight f3 and protect the pawn, right? But in this position, this move is unavailable for white because of his previous move knight f3. And that's why white has to take on the c5 now. So black player understood that the white's move f3 is a bit dubious and he tried to exploit this situation. This is actually what a real strategical thinking is. Okay, now White has to give up his center. And Bishop G5. Now everything is quite usual. They develop pieces. Okay, in this position we can see that Black is leading in development, but White has two bishops. And if White can finish his development normally, he will have little better middle game again because of his two bishops advantage. That's why Black found an interesting way to restrict the white's bishops. He played queen a5, and after knight e2, e4. The move f takes e4 is forced, and now we can see the black's idea. The move f takes e4 blockades the position, now the white's bishop on the d3 becomes passive, and the black's goal is to bring one of his knights to e5 and to keep the position blockaded. After that, the white's bishops will not be active and will not be dangerous for black. By the way, I'd like to emphasize that the move e4 is not an attempt to attack and to mate the white's king. Definitely not. This is a strategical plan with the aim to restrict the white's bishops. Okay, so black played knight g4. He's transferring his knight to e5. White plays bishop f4, yeah, that's correct, taking the e5 square under its control and preventing the black's plan. Black played bishop e6, also quite natural move, developing a piece and taking aim at the c4 pawn. When black plays knight e5 someone in the future, maybe black will attack this pawn on the c4. Here white played rook d1. Well, actually it's hard for me to understand the reason of this move. Obviously white cannot use the d-file here, so why should he place the rook on the d1? Maybe white wanted to protect the d3 bishop, but no one attacks this bishop right now. And even if black will attack this bishop somewhere in the future, white always can play rook d1 when necessary. So why not to make casting, for example? Or the better way is to try to understand the strategical situation, to understand the black's plan and to prevent it. 
As we know, the black's primary idea is to occupy the e5 square, to blockade the position and to keep the white's bishops passive. And white has a quite simple way to prevent it. White can take on the a5. This forces the black's knight to go on the edge and also deflects this knight from the e5 square. After that, white can push h3 and push this knight away and also it will be not possible for black to bring this knight to the e5 in the future. Knight f6, now the c4 pawn been attacked, so white can protect it after rook c1 and everything is good actually. White is threatening to go e5 and to push the knight backward. White still has an extra pawn, although this is a doubled pawn, but anyway, it gives white a little material advantage. If black goes rook d8, white can just protect the bishop and everything is quite fine. Well, I'm not saying that white is winning here, the position is still unclear, but anyway, white has no problems and perhaps his position is slightly better. In the game, however, white didn't care about these strategical elements and he played rook d1. I don't know why. Black played f6, realizing his plan. Now h3, knight e5. Black attacks the c4 pawn, the d3 bishop, and everything becomes good for black. White took there, after f takes e5, the position became totally blockaded, and now the bishop on the d3 is just like a taller pawn. Then white took on the a5, queen takes, now the c4 pawn being attacked, and white has to play rook c1 here, just to protect this pawn. This already shows that the move rook d1 was a mistake. Now white has to waste time on playing rook c1, and right now black controls the f-file, so white can't make castling anymore. On one of the previous moves, instead of rook d1, castling was very easy solution for white. While right now it's not possible at all. Also we can see that the white's position becomes passive, black has lots of ways to develop his initiative, he can attack the bishop d3, after rook d8 he can attack the white's weak pawns, and so on. Black won this game pretty easily after that. I'd like to make a special note here. You see that Black didn't make anything special. He didn't make an opening novelty, he didn't calculate variations 20 moves ahead, he didn't find a sudden combination. He made a normal positional moves, while white player didn't know what to do. This is a quite typical situation, and this is how you can win games easily against your opponents who only can attack. And here is another example. I skipped the first moves because they are theoretical. Here white played h3, preparing a bishop's development. Black replied rook e8, bishop e3, here black plays a5. Right now these all are theoretical moves. But nevertheless, let's think about them. White develops his pieces step by step. While black makes a lot of pawn moves and rook moves, so it already means that there is something a bit dubious in the black strategy. Ok, let's move on. Queen c2, a4, rook d1. Still we can see the same situation. White gradually brings his pieces into the game, while black well tries to use some tactical tricks, like on the previous move white can't take the pawn because instead of rook d1, because black will take e takes and then will take the pawn on the e4. So black cares about some tactical tricks instead of trying to think strategically and trying to understand what generally he should do. Ok, now after rook d1 he played queen a5, and then rook b1, here black took e takes d4. Well, I guess black player did these moves unthinkingly just because this is a well-known idea. Brunstein played this 50 years ago, so modern players can just repeat the ideas of old masters. However, there is a huge problem here. You cannot play chess unthinkingly. So when Bernstein played these moves, he understood what he, di what he did. Well, modern players just repeat them. Without understanding that the move e takes d4 gives up a center, which is a strategical mistake. Usually we need to keep the center. And not allow our opponent to get a big advantage here. Ok, and d4 knight c5. This actually provokes white to play b4 and white will definitely do it. 
Now black is hoping to attack white somehow after queen b4 and then maybe attack the b3 weakness. So again, black is trying to create an attacking position without enough strategical reasons. White has an advantage in the center, all the white pieces are active, so the black's attacking attempts will not be dangerous for white. Quite the contrary, right now black uses a queen to blockade the white's pawn. As we know, this is a mistake. Queen is a bad blocker because it can be easily attacked. For example, white can attack it by knight a2. It doesn't work right now because after the queen move, the e4 pawn is hanging. But well, this is a temporary factor. Such tactical tricks cannot help black always. White played bishop f4, attacking the d6 pawn, bishop f8, now bishop d2. We already can see that black has some problems because of the wrong piece on the blockade square. Queen b6, now bishop e3. White again opposes his bishop to the black's queen. Queen b4. And here white played queen d2. White found another way how to disturb the black's queen. Now white is going to go knight c2, attack the queen and when it goes away to push b4, pushing all the black's pieces backward and getting a strategically winning position. Black played queen b6, but now white can play b4 right away, which gives white a force and win. In this variation after queen d3, white is taking the knight, and when black solves this problem somehow, white will play knight e6, taking the queen, and after the queen move, white can go knight c7, attacking everything and getting a decisive material advantage. A general conclusion from this lesson is pretty simple. Create a position where your opponent has no direct attacking moves. Create a strategical position where he needs to think strategically and understand the situation. In such case, your opponent will don't know what to do and you will win the game easily.